There are hundreds of notable historical events that have taken place on January 20th. They range from hostage crises to sports victories to the preferred inauguration day of U.S. presidents since FDR in 1937. It's a very popular day for things to happen. Seriously, look it up. In the church, however, this day is reserved for the celebration of one of its most interesting saints. Bows, arrows, and clubs, oh my. It's January 20th, and this is why St. Sebastian is another dead Christian you should know about. Scene, AD 256, Rome. As you may or may not have already heard about, the centuries following Jesus' death and resurrection weren't exactly the most friendly for Christians living in the Roman Empire. Persecution ran rampant. Christians spent their lives looking around every corner, praying that their time hadn't yet come, but were prepared to lay down their lives for their confession. Unlike the stories of some of the other subjects of dead Christians you should know about, Sebastian's early life was calm and uneventful. Sebastian was born in Narbonne, Gaul, which is now France, in AD 25. He was educated in Milan, Italy. At this point, the historical record of Sebastian's childhood and early adulthood gets muddy at best. But in AD 283, at the age of 27, he enrolled himself into the army of the Emperor Carinus. Sebastian wasn't looking for the path to glory, a plot of land and a mule, or even something productive to do with his youthful energy. Sebastian had a plan. Sebastian was a Christian. And Sebastian's goal in the army was to protect his brothers and sisters in the faith from the persecution of their government and to evangelize to as many people as he could in the process. And so, Sebastian joined the army and went into training. By all accounts, don't worry, we'll get there in a second, he was pretty darn successful at it too, proclaiming the gospel to soldiers and commanders alike, all the while protecting Christians from persecution whenever he could. Sebastian, however, was not only an evangelist, he was a legit soldier. Apparently, he had sufficiently distinguished himself during his first year in the army to be promoted to the Praetorian Guard. You know, those guys who always surround the Roman Emperor in the movies? The ones with the ornate armor and the furry helmets? Those guys. And so, Sebastian became a member of the Praetorian Guard personal bodyguard to emperors Diocletian and Maximian, Carinus's successors. Now, just because he got a fancy promotion doesn't mean that Sebastian abandoned his role of protecting Christians new and old alike. In fact, he went about his task with even more fervor. Two specific stories stick out from Sebastian's time serving in the Roman army. While a Praetorian guard, Sebastian encountered the twin brothers, Marcus and Marcellian, two Roman citizens who had been in prison for their beliefs. You see, the brothers were deacons in the Christian church, and as such, they absolutely refused to make any offerings to the pagan Roman gods. This honorable, but all the same deadly stance landed them in a nice Roman timeout a.k.a. a small bar jail cell with barely any contact to the outside world. The twins' parents, who were not Christians, would visit them in prison, begging them to renounce their Christian faith so that they might return home to their families, rather than face the persecution that would surely be coming their way. Upon hearing of the brothers' plight, Sebastian personally visited them. Instead of removing the brothers' parents and enforcing the prisoners' sentences, like any good Roman soldier would, Sebastian converted the parents and the local prefect who was in charge of carrying out the brothers' senses, too. Shortly after the brothers' release from prison, a local man named Nicostratus, a jailer, and the father of a girl who had been mute for six years, brought his daughter to Sebastian. After she expressed her desire to convert, Sebastian quickly healed and baptized her and her parents and the 16 other Christian prisoners her father was in charge of. In AD 286, word of Sebastian's healing miracle, as well as his escapades in converting Roman soldiers and other notable people, spread all the way to Emperor Diocletian himself, 
Diocletian confronted his Praetorian guard Sebastian directly. This conversation must have been great fun for all parties involved. But Diocletian had had enough of Sebastian's Christian ways. He commanded Sebastian to be chained to a stake on a nearby hill and ordered a troop of archers to fire upon him. And so they did. The reports state that he was pierced with so many arrows that Sebastian looked like an urchin, all full of pricks. In spite of this, Sebastian remained staked on the hill, a lie, but barely. His body was retrieved by Irene of Rome, dead Christians trading card number 288, and was taken to his home. It seemed he was on his deathbed, but Sebastian was nursed back to health. Sebastian, covered in the scars of this attempted murder, was even more strengthened in his resolve to preach the gospel. And so began the second martyrdom of Sebastian. Being a former Praetorian guard and knowing all the ins and outs of their patrols, Sebastian sneaked into Diocletian's palace and stalked the emperor until he was alone beside a staircase. Sebastian jumped out from behind the staircase and began to lecture Diocletian on the murders he had committed against the Christians of Rome. Wait a second, this guy was supposed to be dead. Diocletian had witnessed him shot full of arrows not a few months ago, and now he was in the palace? Alive? Sebastian was a man incensed, a man with purpose. The emperor must hear about the travesties his empire was committing. However astonished that this formerly, mostly dead man was in front of him, the emperor did not receive Sebastian's scolding kindly. Diocletian ordered Sebastian to be seized. He was taken to another Roman prison and beaten to death with clubs. There would not be another miraculous resurrection for Sebastian. Sebastian's, really dead this time, body was retrieved by a Roman Christian named Lucina, dead Christian trading card, numbered 3910, who cleaned and dressed his body and buried him in the catacombs at the cemetery Calaxtus. Sebastian's recognition as a saint came before the Christian church was officially established and relics containing his remains were distributed throughout the church. His gold-plated and bejeweled cranium even resides at a church in Germany. And yes, the ancient church even used it for the Lord's Supper. Ew. To this day, Saint Sebastian is remembered as the patron saint of persecuted Christians, of soldiers and archers, and for protection from the bubonic plague. And that is why St. Sebastian is another dead Christian you should know about. Oh, and one more thing. What exactly links Sebastian to the plague of all things? Legend says that after his first martyrdom, St. Sebastian was covered head to toe in large, deep scars from all the arrows that pierced his body. These scars apparently resembled the painful, weeping boils the bubonic plague caused for its victims. Thanks for watching this episode of Dead Christians You Should Know About. Dead Christians is a publication of Higher Things Incorporated. All research, writing, and recording was done by me, Patrick Sturdivant, with animation by Sandra Madden and George Borghart IV, and character illustrations by Jessica Jacoby. For more information about Dead Christians You Should Know About or Higher Things, visit our website www.higherthings.org